The stones grew hot during noon. Only natives dared walk barefoot across the pavement, but even they quickened their pace so their skin wouldn't wither from the heat. The air was dry and the sky a piercing blue, swallows swooping in over the water. Summer stretched its arms, entangling the valley. Benjamin enjoyed these days most, languidly sprawled out on the boardwalk near the lake. Big deciduous trees sheltered him from the sun's relentlessness as he watched people scurry along from underneath his quiet hideout. Summers were slow in the village, and Benjamin did not mind. He'd spend all his hours on his boardwalk, accompanied by his favorite books, as he would feel the water dry on his legs. The breeze would skirt through the hair, making it feel as if tiny bugs cascaded down towards his feet. Normally, not even that sensation could distract him from the pages. But today his attention was something a book couldn't keep. He was thinking about the boy he had met yesterday. Benjamin had been scouring the shelves of his favorite bookstore, looking for a new read, when he'd spotted him. Eyebrows dipped together in concentration, but every other feature of his face soft. He was holding one of Benjamin's favorite books, the tops of his fingers just barely sticking out from underneath the long sleeves of his shirt. Benjamin was often too shy, but something about this boy compelled him. You know, if you're thinking about getting it, I would really recommend you to do so, he'd said, coming up next to the handsome boy. A blush raised on the stranger's cheeks, as if Benjamin had caught him in something far more intimate than reading the blurb on the back cover of a novel. He glanced at Benjamin sideways, a questioning look in his eyes. It's one of my favorites, Benjamin supplied. The AC hummed in reply as the silence of the other boys stretched thin. Just as Benjamin was to walk away in shame, the boy replied, Why is that? His voice sounded soft and sweet, like clear water cascading over the pebbles in a mountain brook. Benjamin knew he needed this boy to speak with him again. Well, I mostly just like the message, he began. It's totally okay to be yourself, no matter who you are or might be. At those words, the boy looked him into the eyes for the first time, something sparking there. They were now speaking between the lines, and as someone who spent most of his life between the written word, Benjamin had gotten pretty good. The boy was tapping his fingers on the cover of the book absentmindedly. It sounds really good, as if it has deeper layers to it. Benjamin's enthusiasm sparked at that, momentarily forgetting to keep his cool as he gushed. Oh, it really does. There's all kinds of theories about certain story arcs. He took a breath to calm down. But I really can't tell you about those until you've read it first. He finished softly. The boy blushed again and ducked his head, taking a moment to stare at the object in his hands before giving a sly glance to Benjamin. Well, maybe you could tell me about it after I've read it, he said softly, not meeting Benjamin's eyes. Electricity sparked through Benjamin's body at those words. I'd love to, he replied, and in a rush of bravery added, Is there any way I can contact you? Benjamin didn't understand what it was about this stranger that had captivated him so much, but now he was impatiently waiting for a sign of life on his phone. He told the other boy to text him when he finished the book. And surely just a day was enough to complete such a task, right? Benjamin himself had to admit that maybe a day wasn't enough time to read a book for most people, but just when he was about to put his phone away, the screen lit up with a text from Joshua. So you couldn't have warned me for that ending, book boy? Benjamin replied, it wouldn't have had the same impact if I did. If you want to talk about it, I'm at the docks all afternoon. Joshua answered quickly, I'd love that. Where are you at? Benjamin grinned before responding. Text me when you're near Stacy's parlor. Benjamin couldn't help but smile at his phone as he felt his back hit the wood of the boardwalk and the filtered sun fell on his face. He couldn't deny that it was too soon to be this hung up on a boy, but he couldn't help himself. He put his book aside, definitely too anxious to read now, and waited for Joshua's arrival. Joshua looked a little like an abandoned puppy when Benjamin saw him standing next to Stacy's parlor. He was looking around a little shyly, alternating between scanning the boardwalk and looking down at his phone. Benjamin's heart melted a little. The melting made way for stomach twists when Joshua looked up, saw Ben and granted him a gorgeous smile. 
Hi, Benjamin said when he was in Joshua's earshot. Hi, Joshua shyly replied. God, Benjamin couldn't get enough of that sweet, soft voice. Why'd you want to meet out here? Well, there's a beautiful, luscious spot nearby, but it's sort of my secret. I wasn't going to give those coordinates away before a proper first date. Joshua blushed hard. Date, huh? I mean, this isn't yet, but I'd love to take you on a real one if you give all the right answers to my questions about the book. Benjamin quipped. Joshua chuckled at that. Oh, there's right answers? I didn't know I was taking AP English all over again. Of course there's right answers, Benjamin exclaimed, leading the way away from the boulevard and onto a beaten path towards the shoreline. When they got to the small deck where Benjamin liked to spend most of his time, Joshua's eyes grew wide and he gasped audibly. Wow, he breathed. I understand you wouldn't want to share this place with just anyone. Benjamin just smiled and held out his hand for Joshua to step down onto the deck with him. Joshua carefully put his hand in Ben's before coming down. Benjamin only now noticed how there seemed to be flecks of gold in Joshua's eyes. He could see the smile that was gracing his features without even looking at his mouth, the crinkles near his eyes telling him all. Instinctively, Ben smiled back. They stood there for a moment, eye to eye in appreciative silence, until Joshua broke the gaze to take in their surroundings. I could come here every day, he sighed. Enraptured with the shimmering of the light on the lake and the small oasis of shade and silence they found themselves in. If you're able to put up with my presence for that long, you're totally welcome to. Benjamin smiled as he sat down on the edge of the dock and slowly dangled his feet into the water. Joshua copied his moves, and a shiver traveled down Ben's spine when their arms brushed against each other. I think I could manage that. Joshua smiled softly. At least if I ace the AP English test first. Benjamin let out a surprised laugh at that. I'm not sure if the answers still matter that much to me anymore, he confessed. The look that Joshua shot him then made a blush creep up his skin. He hoped his olive color would hide it, and quickly reached behind him for his current conquest. If you like that last book, I think you'll like this too, he said as he handed it over. Their hands brushed, and Benjamin knew this boy would be the death of him when he caught the soft glint in Joshua's eyes. Summer stretched out slowly, and Benjamin found himself longing for Joshua's presence when he arrived at the dock early every morning. They'd chat, but more so would often sit together in comfortable silence, each engrossed in their own inner world. Benjamin couldn't deny that electricity sparked across his skin every time he and Joshua would brush hands or arms or legs which seemed inevitable on the tiny platform. He wondered if Joshua felt it too, or if it was just his hopes that had him seeing Scarlet creeping up Joshua's neck. Today was probably one of the hottest days the year would bring, and the two boys hadn't taken their feet out of the cool water of the lake since they got to the docks. Their shoulders were touching, and despite the smothering heat, Ben kept his weight firmly planted against Joshua, afraid that if he'd move he'd lose the contact he so longed for. He enjoyed looking down at their hands, realizing that if he'd splay his fingers their pinkies would overlap. Instead he pushed his toes to the bottom of Joshua's feet, who aptly shrieked and almost fell into the water as he thrashed around. Benjamin grabbed his flailing arm and pulled him back in until their faces were just inches apart. He held his breath for as long as he held onto Joshua's arm as his eyes flicked up to Josh's eyes, his mouth, and back to his eyes again. Both boys seemed frozen despite the summer heat. Benjamin could smell the sunscreen on Josh's skin, as well as the musky smell of his sweat underneath. Ever so slowly, he leaned in. Joshua's lips were soft. Not in the way Sarah's lips had been soft when they kissed behind Stacy's parlor last year. She tasted of artificial strawberries, and her lips had been slightly sticky from the chapstick. Benjamin could already tell he liked kissing Joshua better. He softly put his hand on Joshua's leg to balance himself, and Joshua retracted. I'm sorry, I don't, I... He spluttered. Benjamin was horrified. Oh God, he exclaimed. I didn't mean to overstep. I don't even know if you like boys. I, I should have never just come onto you like that. I'm so sorry, he rambled. No, 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 Joshua interjected, putting a hand on Benjamin's arm to get him to stop. I do like you like that. I just thought you were going to, you know, he said, 
motioning towards the general area of his crotch. I was moving too fast, Benjamin supplied, relieved at the situation. Well, not exactly. Joshua took his hand away from Ben's arm and fiddled with his hands in his lap. I'm just scared you're going to reach for something and not find it, he mumbled softly. Benjamin didn't quite follow. What do you mean? he asked softly, tentatively brushing his fingers against Josh's arms, trying to get him to face Ben again. I'm not a boy like that, Joshua started carefully, only looking at Benjamin from the corners of his eyes. Suddenly something clicked in Benjamin's brain. Oh, he started softly. Oh, again, relieved. He put his hand on Joshua's jaw and made him turn his head. That's okay, Ben said as they locked eyes. I'm not looking for a boy like that. I'm just looking for you. He could feel the puff of air that Joshua released against his lips before they connected with Joshua's mouth again. When both boys were laying blissed out on the dock, their bodies glistening from the sweat, Benjamin carefully rolled onto his side and softly traced the scars on Joshua's chest. It was way too hot to be cuddled this close together, but he couldn't resist. You know, for what it's worth, you'll always be the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen. The air was dry and the sky a piercing blue, and together they watched the swallows swoop over the water as summer blew out another breath.